All right, welcome back, everybody. So this is the chapter six review section six one and six two, basically. Um, and again, as we go along, you're going to be you're going to see here. Uh, we do chapter seven, chapter nine, then chapter ten. I think we go seven, nine, ten. I don't think we do chapter eight. Um, uh, chapter seven. I think there's I think there's three sections in chapter seven, but I know there's only a couple in two in chapter nine and two in chapter ten. Uh, so. We're getting right down to it. We we only had uh, a couple. Let's say four, five, seven, seven, maybe eight sections left, and that's it. That's it for the rest of the year. So let's get after it here. Um, section six one, just to kind of uh, summarize everything that uh, um, is covered on the test. Uh, section six one was confidence intervals for the mean, where the um, where the sigma is known. Right, sigma is known or large samples. Um, remember, sigma. Oh, I think I should have said sigma known. Uh, large or small normal. Right. Remember that you could either have a large sample or it's got to be a small normal sample. Right. You could be under thirty if you um, if you have a um, uh, if you assume that the original uh, original population is normal. The original sample is normal. Uh, and then what do we do for that? Well, uh, to find the ex the error margin, that capital E is the error margin. And again, these these are all in your formula sheet. I just just kind of popped them off there. Um, the uh, error margin is always going to be ZC um, divided by sigma, or sorry, multiplied by sigma divided by the square root of n. Um, and again, this is if sigma is known. If sigma is known. Um, <coughs> excuse me. And we get that ZC by the confidence by the level of confidence that you choose to um, use, whether it's a 95, 99, uh, 90%, whatever you choose. Uh, and that's that comes from the table, right? That, and you can, you're gonna have either the Z table or the, the, the T table. But you've got your T table as well as your Z table. You're gonna use your Z table for when the, when the sigma is known, you're going to use the t table for when the sigma is unknown. That's in the two sections. Good job. All right. So your error margin is zc times sigma over the square root of n. Remember, this is that unique formula um, that will tell you n, the required number of uh, the required number of the required sample size. I guess you could say the required sample size uh, that you would need. To show some sort of uh, level of significance, the the, um, the the confidence level of confidence, if you will. So you would take your ZC times sigma over your error margin, the error margin that you are okay with, going from large to small, uh, and then you would square that, and that would be the number the those uh, the, the required sample size to show that error margin. And then this is your true confidence interval, right? That is your true confidence interval. X bar plus or minus e. X bar plus or minus your Error margin, um, and that's the that's the range of values that you have for your uh, your mu. And remember that that's really what the project was, right? That that that's really what the project was. You you knew your sigma. Oh, I'm sorry, you didn't know your sigma. You need you knew your uh, your sample sigma. You needed your s. You knew your s, but you didn't know your actual sigma, your population, uh, and that gave you your error margin on either side. So uh, speaking to that on your um, uh, on your project, this, is, this would have been set from section six two, where sigma is unknown. The, now, and again, make a difference between sigma and s. Sigma is your population sample size, or oh, excuse me, sigma is your population standard deviation, where s is your sample standard deviation, and that's where the sigmas turn into s's and the z's turn into t's. The structure of the formulas are the same, just the components are a little different because. Well, the situation is a little different. So when you have sigma is unknown, again, same stipulations, uh, large sample or small normal. We can only use this with small normal or large sample. Um, so like if I told you sample size was 10 and we didn't know that the uh, population was assumed to be normal, then I wouldn't be able to use any of this confidence interval stuff. We'd have to use some sort of different calculation or we would just be able to not say it all. Um, now the error margin for, uh, when say, when Sigma is unknown, you say TC. Now this is TC now T being your T table distribution. 
Um, that's the one with the degrees of freedom on it, right? Degrees of, degrees of freedom down the left side. Well, it looks like this. You take your uh, TC using your degrees of freedom and the level of confidence. Uh, notice again, this is says one tail, two tail alpha. You, we are not concerned with one tail, two tail alpha yet. That will be in chapter seven. Uh, right now, we are only concerned with the top portion of that table where it says level of confidence C. So you're taking TC. Uh, next chapter, we'll talk about T alpha. TC, level of confidence up at the top. And then you take your degrees of freedom. Remember, degrees of freedom is N minus one. So if you have a, you know, a, a sample size of, I don't know, uh, 45, your degrees of freedom would be 45. Sample size of 30, degrees of freedom would be 29. And then you find your T value, your T score off that. And then you take that multiplied by, instead of sigma divided by square root of N, we have S, which again, S, different from sigma, is the sample standard deviation rather than population standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. And again, this is really what you had as your, uh, your error margin and, and, or your uh, confidence interval. And remember, the confidence interval is a uh, parameter, it's, it's a kind of uh, it's an interval on the population mean, right? So like for all of your projects that you've had, you had your question that you posed, uh, you never talked to the, like the, you, you never studied the entire population. It was just a portion of the population. You didn't know, you, you found X bar, not mu. So what you're doing, what you're saying is your statement in the end, you're saying I am 95% confident that the population mean is within this range of values. You're not saying necessarily that the probability is those that, that it's gonna fall between there. You're saying that I am 95% confident that the true population mean is going to fall between these two values. And again, what happens as you raise your confidence? What happens if you say, I, instead of going from 95% confident, I'm going to go 99% confident. What happens to your confidence interval then? It's going to grow, right? It's going to have to be a bigger interval if you raise your confidence because you can't be so sure. If you want to be more sure, then you're going to have to you know, make your target bigger, you know? If you want to make your target smaller, you're going to be less confident about hitting your target, okay? So your, uh, air, uh, so that's really where your uh, confidence interval came in. All right, enough of me yapping. Let's get to the actual questions from the review. All right. You want to know the average ACT score of Lake High School students. You know that the population standard deviation is 2.4. You want to be 80% confident that you are within 0.3 points of the mean. What is the minimum sample size required? Okay, so this is your N. Like this is that unique one, N is equal to ZC sigma over E squared. Yeah, which again is on the formula sheet. Let me just double check that. I, yeah, it's got to be on the formula sheet. Chapter 6. Yeah, there it is right there. N is equal to... Um, ZC sigma over E squared. You just got to be able to tell what those things are. Right? You got to know what ZC is. You got to know what E stands for and so on. Okay. So what is ZC in this case? Well, I got to use the 80% confidence interval, right? Or I've got to use the 80% confidence. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to say 80% confidence. Now, you don't need to look within your table. You shouldn't need to look within your table. You can logically reason that through because you have these critical values down here in your table, right? Those critical values are usually going to tell you your Z-score, your, your ZC. So if I say 80% confident, I'm going to look at 0.8, oh, 1.28 right there. 1.28. So ZC is 1.28. Uh, sigma, you know the population standard deviation is 2.4. What is E in this case? What's E? How far away am I okay from being on the mean? 0.3. So your error margin in this case is 0.3. And then we square that. Let's see what that is. Let's run that number there. One point two eight times two point four divided by 0.3. Did 
Did I do it two times in a row? Yeah. So 10.4 squared, 10.24 squared. Uh, do you guys get 104.85? So what am I going to round that to? Even if it was lower than 0.5, like what if I had said 104.1? Because if you want to be that confident to be within 0.3 points of the mean, you're going to have to go up. You're going to overestimate that underestimate. Questions about that? All right, let's take a look at this next one here. A random sample of 10 adults gives the following screen times per hour, in hours per day. Assuming that the uh, amount of exercise, exercise, screen time, maybe that should say screen time. Screen time. Screen time. Screen time. Per week is normally distributed to find 95% confidence interval of the population mean. Uh, show the work for the sample mean, a sample, sample standard deviation. All right, so I'm just going to fill in my table here uh, because, you know, if I truly want a 95% confidence interval, the 95% confidence interval is going to need me need uh, my error margin. And to get my error margin, I need S, right? I can find all of these things right now. This, uh, you know, I know that E is equal to TC S over radical N. Okay, so what is TC in this case? 95% Now, am I going to use a Z table or a T table? Use a T. Yeah, and why am I using T, not a Z? Because sigma is unknown, right? Because I don't know anything about my population. All I knew, all I know is that, um, all I know is that these ten adults. That's it. Nothing other, nothing more than that. Now, how how do I know that I actually can use all of these calculations? My sample size is really small. However, normally distributed, right? Okay, so I'm good here. Uh, so 95% with my confidence interval. And what is my degrees of freedom here? Nine. nine. So I've got nine degrees of freedom. And my I'm 95%. So 2.262. 2.262. Is that's what I'm seeing here. Nine degrees of freedom, 95% confident, 2.262. Um, and I know my N is obviously 10, but I don't know this S. Now, do I need my mean, my sample mean for the calculation for error margin? No, but I do need it when I go to actually find my, comp my confidence interval, right? Because I'm going to need to look at X bar plus or minus E. That's going to get me my confidence interval. So I'll need that eventually. All right. And again, enough of me yet, but let's get to it. So 4, 3 .2, 5 .8, 7, 6, 3 7, 5, 2, 1.5, 3, and 2.5. All right. This is, a, this is a major throwback, finding standard deviation. Oh. All right. Let's add these up. I've got, I'm just going to come over to the keypad here, 4 plus 3.2 plus. Oops, that's a 5.8 plus 7 plus 6 plus 3.75, 2, 1.5, 3, 2, 1. Got to double check that. 4, 3.2, 5.8, 7, 6, 3.75, 2, 1.5, 3, and 2.5. And I divide that by 10, so move the decimal 3.875. Is that what you guys got? Check me as we go because, you know, I'm, I'm not a robot. I, I don't normally make a ton of mistakes, but I do make mistakes. 3.875. Oh, that's not S. Excuse me. That's X bar. That's X bar. Excuse me. Now, I wrote x minus x bar squared. Is that what I need? Um, yeah, I get, yeah, it is what I need. x minus x bar squared. Here, how do I know I need that? Um, sample standard deviation. 
sample standard, because this is a sample, right? Sample standard deviation says S is equal to the square root of sum of X minus X bar squared divided by N minus one. Yeah, that's my formula. Sample, that's from chapter two, sample standard deviation. Okay, so I'm going to calculate my X minus X bar squares. So this is going to be 4 minus 3.875 squared. So let's round it to the nearest. Should we go three decimal places out? I think it's a point one five six. Point zero one five six. I mean, I would, I vary. <laughs> you did point zero one four. Oh, what you? I rounded the point. Uh, did you do three point nine? Three point eight eight. Oh, yeah. See, and now this is where I'll have to look at your work and, and kind of see what you rounded your mean to. Because if, you know, if you round your mean to 3.9, it's going to be drastically different, right? Yeah. If you round it to 3.88, it's going to be different. If you, round, if you keep it unrounded, like I'm going to do, but now I'm going to round. See, I say unrounded, but now I'm going to do it. Uh, let's go 0. 0.016. Now, our numbers shouldn't be too far off. It's actually going to be interesting to see how far off our numbers are just by um, our difference in our mean. Uh, I'm going to redo this, and instead of 4, it's going to be 3, insert a 0 0.2. 0 0.456. Okay. Same thing, but now instead of 3.2, we're going to do 5.8. 3.7. Three point oops zero seven six seven zero six. We do seven, just a flat seven. And that gives me nine point seven six six. We'll do the same calculation for six. Four point five one six. We're going to run the same for 3.75. 3, insert a 0 0.75. 0 0.016, same thing here. It's interesting because it's the equal amount away lower as upper from 3.75 to 4 as 3.875. And then we'll do 2. <coughs> here. And do a 2, which is 3.516. And we'll do a 1.5. 5.641. We'll do a 3. Point seven six six, and lastly we'll do a two point five. Is this get up there? A two point five. One point eight nine one. All right. So to find our true sample standard deviation, I'm going to add all these up. <laughs> Maybe I should have rounded <laughs> a little bit better. Um, we got point zero one six plus 0.456 plus 3.7006 plus 9.766 plus 4.516 plus 0 0.016 3.516 plus 5.641 plus 0.766 plus 1.891 Okay, there's my sum, 30.29. So S is equivalent to uh, 30.29 divided by 9, and I'm going to take the square root of that. I'm going to divide by 9, and I'm going to square root it. Okay, so for us rounding differently, I got my S to be one point, I'll go nearest hundredth now, 
1.83. How? What did you guys get? 8.3 squared. Yeah, that's where we did it. There's a square in it, like. The x minus x one squared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did that. That was I was doing that within those calculations, right? Yeah. Just double check in. Just double check in. Just double check in. Yeah, x minus x bar squared. Yep. So how far off were you guys? Do you same. Same. Yeah, it probably comes out in the wash, you know, I mean, it's, the rounding is minimal. Yeah. All right, so now I have all of, all of what I need to find my confidence interval now, to find my error margin. So my error margin is going to be TC, which, got, which that was my 2.262 times S, 1.83, divided by the square root of 10. Now watch out here. You're going to be jumping back and forth between n minus 1 and n. Okay, just be very careful about what formulas require the n minus 1 and what things require the n. Okay, that like degrees of freedom is n minus 1. Sample standard deviation formula is n minus 1. But error margin is just n. All right, so we've got 1.83 divided by the square root of 10 times 2.262. So, my error margin is 1.31. And now I go above and below my x bar. So, I'm going to take 3.875 plus 1.31 and 3.875 minus 1.31. So, I know my mean. I am 90, what, what, 90, no, 80, I, oh, no, I was right, 95% confident that the mean is in between 2.565 and 5.185. Questions about that? Right, let's keep it rolling. That that question is going to require the most time to work, just because you got to draw back to finding actual sample standard deviation. Random sample of forty men found that their height had a mean of five point nine feet. The standard deviation for the sample of 0.4 feet. Find a ninety-five percent confidence interval for the population mean. Wait a sec. I don't say that this is normally distributed. So why can I do this? It's above thirty, right? N is 40. Uh, now, is this mu or x bar? A random sample of 40 men found that their height had a mean of 5.9 feet. X bar. That's x bar. Because mu is population mean. Did I take the entire population of men? No. No. I took a uh, I took a sample. What's that? I saw that earlier. Oh no, it's a little feather. Oh. Because it was floating on the screen, but I thought it was a spider coming down. Right. That's scary. You didn't say anything. No, well, you were like doing something somewhere else. You were in the zone. I was in the zone. I was looking at my. I was wired in. Um, now. With a standard deviation of 0.4 feet, is that S or F, uh, sigma? What is it? S. It's S. Why? Sample. So S is 0 0.4. And I want to use a 95% confidence interval. Am I going to use a T or a Z? T. Sample. Okay. So T, C. 95% confident. Um, how many degrees of freedom? 39. So 95% confident at 39, 2.023. Okay, we have all the required information we need to find the confidence interval. Okay. So again, <coughs> excuse me.
I know the error margin is going to be TC S over radical N. So in this case, TC is 2.023. S is 0 0.4 divided by the square root of 40. So let's run that first. 0.4 divided by the square root of 40 times 2.023. 0.128. Okay, now take that 0.128, go in above and below my x bar. 5.9 plus 0.128, 5.9 minus 0.128. So I can say that I am 95% confident that the actual mean falls between 6.028 and 5.772 feet. Number four. From a random sample of 24 months, the mean number of tornadoes per month in the U.S. was about 100. Assume population standard deviation to be 114. Find a 90 percent. Oh. You know, it's interesting here. Do I tell you that this is normally distributed? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I remember having this problem last semester. You know what's funny about, about this problem? I took this one straight out of the book, like word for word, like because I was struggling coming up with more questions for a review, and I was just like, oh, I'll just take one of the book problems that we did do, like one of the suggested ones, you know, that are kind of not the actual sign one. And I remember, so I, I think it was Swope bringing it up, and be like, wait, it doesn't normally normal distribute. Oh, you're right, it doesn't. Weird. Let's assume normal normally distributed, shall we? So we can actually do the problem. All right, so n is twenty four. Oops. N is 24. Uh, the mean number of tornado tornadoes per month in the U.S. was about 100. So X bar is equal to 100, right? Uh, assume population standard deviation is 114. Now, is that S or sigma? Sigma. So sigma is equal to 114. Okay, so now am I going to be finding a ZC or a TC? Z because I have population standard deviation. So now let me flip over to my Z tables instead of my T tables. So many papers. So many papers. What is it? 1.645, thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. And that comes from that little tiny table at the bottom of the z-square table. All right. So now um, let's find our error margin. Error margin, again, is now zc uh, sigma over radical n, right? Let's just double check. Is that for the formula? Don't want to check it. All right. So zc is 1.645. Sigma is 114. Square root of 24. All right, so we can say 114 divided by the square root of 24. Come on now. 114 divided by the square root of 24, please. 23.27. Oh, not yet. Times 1.64. 38.2. Okay, so above and below 100, right? So 100 minus 38.28, uh, 61.72, 61.72, and 138.28. Do you want to go to the whole number? Ah. Uh, and if we work. 
what would it be? Yeah, 62 it or 60? 60. You could round. Yeah. That, that doesn't require any weird rounding rules. Yeah. Ready? Questions about that? <laughs> okay. Last one. Um, how does changing the certain quantities, level of confidence, sample size, standard deviation, affect the width of the confidence interval? So this is the one that I can really write. You know, like there's a formula or anything like that. Um, how does changing the level of confidence affect the confidence. If I increase the level of confidence, what does that do to the confidence interval? It expands it, right? It makes it bigger. If I increase the if I if I go from 90% confident to 95% confident, increasing the level of confidence expands the confidence interval. Decreasing the level of confidence closes in the confidence interval. Okay, okay what about sample size? If I increase sample size, what does that do to the confidence interval? Yeah, it would make it small. If I increase the sample size, it's going to make this, the confidence interval smaller, right? It's going to make my target smaller. Yeah, because as I increase n, as I increase n, it's going to become more normal and more normal and more normal. Getting easier, easier to predict, easier, easier to predict, easier to predict. The smaller the sample size, then the more spread out the confidence interval needs to be. Uh, what about standard deviation? What's that going to do to confidence interval? As I increase the standard deviation, what's that going to do to the confidence interval? Increase it as well. Okay. As I increase standard deviation, it's going to increase, uh, increase the confidence interval. Okay. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. No, those are the only thing that goes in this confidence interval. Cool. We feel good? Cool. Let me stop the video.